from the thigh, and a piece from the neck. Invisible, visible, the world does not work without both. If you throw dust at someone's head, nothing will happen. If you throw water, nothing, but combine them into a lump. That marriage of water and dirt cracks open the head, and afterward there are other marriages. Shake Karakani and his wretched wife. Don't look at me. Fall into the safety of God. I'm already drowned. Do I have a beard? I can't remember. Rescue this man from his mustache, curling so proudly, while inside he tears his hair. Married to God, married to God, but pretending not. We see distinctly what this imposter becomes in a hundred years. A shape looks into a chunk of iron like it's a mirror. What this bushy bearded man does not discover in his house of oil can find so easily. Dive into the ocean, you're caught in your own pretentious beard. 217. Like something you didn't eat. You're not garbage. Pearls want to be like you. You should be with them where waves and fish and pearls and seaweed and wind are all one. No linking, no hierarchy, no distinctions, no perplexed wondering, no speech. Beyond describing. Either stay here and talk or go there and be silent. Or you both, by turns. With those who see double, talk double talk. Make noise, beat a drum, think of metaphors. With friends, say only mystery. Near roses, sing. With deceptive people, cover the jar, and shield it. But be calm with those in duality. polishes and purifies. Here's the story of a man looking for Sheikh Karakani. A certain dervish goes out from Talakan, over the mountains and through a long valley. The injuries and troubles he suffered deserve mention, but I'll make it short. The young man arrives at the Sheikh's house and knocks. The Sheikh's wife sticks her head out. What do you want? I come with the intention of seeing the shape. Ho oh, ho, oh, laughs the wife, lock at his reverence. Was there nothing to do where you live that you came on such an idle sightseeing expedition? Can you hate your hometown? Or maybe Satan led you here by the nose? I won't tell you all she said. Still, I would like to see the shape. Better you should turn around and go home. Hundreds of your kind have come like Israelites to rub their hands on this arrogant gold calf, parasite, liquor of platters on the floor, heavy slumbering good for nothing. They say, zero, two I eight. This is ecstasy, zero. They forget any real religious ceremony and ritual prayers. The young man could stand it no more. What is this? I've been ambushed by a night patrol in full daylight. Your blitherings try to keep me from the presence of a holy man, but I know what light led me here, the same that turned the golden cap into words in a sacred story. A saint is a theater where the qualities of God can be seen. Don't try to keep me out. Puff on this candle, and your face will get burned. Rather try blowing out the sun, or fitting a muzzle on the sea. Old bats like you dream that their cave dark is everywhere, but it's not. My determination to be in that presence is quick and constant. You won't stop or slow me. A revealer of mystery and that which is revealed are the same. Seed, sowing, growing, harvest, one presence. The husk, old hag of a nagging world, should bow to that. Hal I said, I am God, and lived it out.
What happens when the eye disappears? What's left after not? Whoever scoffs at these questions and the experiences they point to, his arrogant spit comes back in his face. There is no spitting on the way we're on. Rain itself turns to spit on those who mock and casually show disrespect to saints. With that he left the doorway and walked about asking in the town. Finally someone said, the TTV is in the forest collecting wood. The young dervish ran toward the forest but with a doubt. Why should such a shape have such a woman for a wife, such an opposite, such a Neanderthal? God forgive my impugning, who am I to judge? But the question remains. 219. How could a teacher lie with that woman? Can a guide agree with a thief? Suddenly Sheikh Karatani appeared, riding a lion, firewood stacked behind him. His whip, a live serpent. Every Sheikh rides a fierce lion, whether you see it or not. Know this with your other eyes. There are thousands of lions under your teacher's eyes and all of them stacked with wood. Karakani knew the problem and immediately began to answer, Well, it's not out of desire tea that I put up with her. Don't think that, it's not her perfume or her bright colored clothes. Enduring her public disdain has made me strong and patient. She is my practice. Nothing can be clear without a polar opposite present. Two banners, one black, one white, and between them something gets settled. Between Pharaoh and Moses, the Red Sea. You consider issues, but not deeply enough. Your spring is frozen, faith is a-flowing. Don't try to forge cold iron. Study David, the ironsman, and dancer, and musician. Move into the sun, you're wrapped in fantasy and inner mumbling. When spirit enters, a man begins to wander freely, escaped and overrunning through the garden plants, spontaneous and soaking in. Now a miracle story. The snake catcher A. And he, the frozen snake. Listen to this, and hear the mirastry inside. A snake catcher went into the mountains to find a snake. He wanted a friendly pet, and one that would amaze audiences, but he was looking for a reptile, something. 220. That has no knowledge of friendship. It was winter. In the deep snow he saw a frighteningly huge dead snake. He was afraid to touch it, but he did. In fact, he dragged the thing into Baghdad, hoping people would pay to see it. This is how foolish we've become. A human being is a mountain range. Snakes are fascinated by us. Yet we sell ourselves to look at a dead snake. We are like beautiful satin. Used to patch burlap, come see the dragon I killed, and hear the adventures. That's what he announced, and a large crowd came, but the dragon was not dead, just dormant. He set up his show at a crossroads. The ring of docking people got thicker, everybody on tiptoe, men and women, noble and peasant, all packed together unconscious of their differences. It was like the resurrection. He began to unwind the thick ropes and remove the cloth covering he wrapped it so well in. Some little movement, the hotter rocky sun had woken the terrible light. The people nearest started screaming. Panic. The dragon tore easily and hungrily loose, killing many instantly. The snake catcher stood there, frozen. What have I brought out of the mountain? The snake braced against a post and crushed the man and consumed him. The snake is your animal soul. 
when you bring it into the hot air of your wanting energy, warmed by that and by the prospect of power and wealth, it does massive damage. Leave it in the snow mountains. Don't expect to oppose it with quietness and sweetness and wishing. The knobs don't respond to those. 221. And they can't be killed. It takes a Moses to deal with such a beast, to lead it back, and make it lie down in the snow. But there was no Moses then. Hundreds of thousands died, polishing the mirror. When Abu Bakr met Muhammad, he said, this is not a face that lies. Abu Bakr was one whose bowl has fallen from the roof. There's no hiding the fragrance that comes from an ecstatic. A polished mirror cannot help reflecting. Muhammad once was talking to a crowd of chieftains, princes with great influence, when a poor blind man interrupted him. Muhammad frowned and said to the man, let me attend to these visitors. This is a rare chance, whereas you are already my friend. You'll have ample time. Then someone nearby said, that blind man may be worth a hundred kings. Remember the proverb, human beings are mine. World power means nothing, only the unsayable, jeweled inner life matters. Muhammad replied, do not think that I'm concerned with being acknowledged by these authorities. If a beetle moves toward Rosewater, it proves that the solution is diluted. Beetle love on, not rose essence. 222. If a coin is eager to be tested by the touchstone, that coin itself may be a touchstone. A thief loves the night. I am they. I reveal essences. A calf thinks God is a cow. A donkey theology changes when someone new pets it and gives what it wants. I am not a cow, or thistles for camels to browse on. People who insult me are only polishing the mirror. Ali in battle. Learn from Ali how to fight without your ego participating. God's lion did nothing that didn't originate from his deep center. Once in battle he got the best of a certain knight and quickly drew his sword. The man, helpless on the ground, spat in Ali's face. Ali dropped his sword, relaxed, and helped the man to his feet. Why have you spared me? How has lightning contracted back into its cloud? Speak, my prince, so that my soul can begin to stir in me like an embryo. Ali was quiet and then finally answered, I am God's lion, not the lion of passion. The sun is my lord. I have no longing except for the one. 223. When a wind of personal reaction comes, I do not go along with it. There are many winds full of anger, and lust and greed. They move the rubbish around, but the solid mountain of our true nature stays where it's always been. There's nothing now, except the divine qualities, come through the opening into me. Your impudence was better than any reverence, because in this moment I am you and you are me. I give you this open heart as God gives gifts. The poison of your spit has become the honey of friendship. 224. 2Z. S beginning and end. The stories that frame the Mathnoe. On the frame. Like other artworks born of a spiritual impulse, Rumi's Mathnui demolishes its form and overreaches its boundaries. Yet two extended stories, near the beginning of Book 1 and near the end of Book 6, give a kind of rounded effect to the whole. They are love stories. 
In both, the narrow romantic love changes to ecstatic love of the beloved, and in both there is a disturbing act of violence, the poisoning of the goldsmith and the killing of the second brother that is crucial to the key dress mystery. The Mathnui itself is a love story that obliterates lovers. Don't look for me in a human shape. These are two stories of that difficult truth. How wanting the Chinese princess leads into the mystery of die before you die. How a picture, an appearance, starts as, the king's three sons, out on a path to the formless marriage. It's overstating the point to say that the stories, frame, the Mathnui, where the refrain, this never ends, keeps revolving by, no model of linear structure is appropriate. The king and the handmaiden and the doctor. Do you know why your soul mirror does not reflect as clearly as it might? Because rust has begun to cover it. It needs to be clean. Here's a story about the inner state that's meant by soul mirror. In the old days there was a king who was powerful in both his kingdoms, the visible as well as the spiritual. 225. One day as he was riding on the hunt, he saw a girl and was greatly taken with her beauty. As was the custom, he paid her family handsomely and asked that she come to be a servant at the palace. I was in love with her. The feelings trembled and flapped in his chest like a bird newly put in a cage. But as soon as she arrived, she fell ill. The king was like the man who had a donkey, but no saddle for the pack. Then he bought a saddle, and wolves killed the donkey. He had a water jar, but no water. Then he found water, but the pitcher fell and broke. He brought his doctors together. You have both our lives in your hands. Her life, is my life. Whoever heals her will receive the finest treasure I have. The coral inlaid with pearls, anything. We'll do what we can. Each of us is the healing savior of our region. Surely we can find it here. They neglected, in the pride of their accomplishments, to say if God wills. I don't mean that just the saying of the phrase would have helped. There was a coldness and a closed quality beneath the omission. There are many who don't say inshallah, and yet their whole soul resonates with it all the time. So the doctors began, and no matter what they tried, the girl got more pale and thin. The effects of their medicines were the opposite of what they expected. Oxymel produced bile, almond oil caused dryness, myrobalan, instead of loosening the bowels, constricted them. 226. Water seemed to feed the fever. The king saw that his doctors were helpless. He ran barefooted to the mosque. He knelt on the prayer rug and soaked the point of it with his tears. He dissolved into an annihilated state, and as he came out of that, he spoke this prayer, you know what's hidden here. I don't know what to do. You have said, even though I know all secrets, still declare it outwardly with an action. He cried out loud for help, and the ocean of grace surged over him. He slept in the midst of his weeping on the prayer rug. In his dream an old man appeared. Good king, I have news. Tomorrow a stranger will come. I have sent him. He is a physician you can trust. Listen to him. As dawn came, the king was sitting up in the Belvedere on his roof. He saw someone coming, a person like the dawn. He ran to meet this guest. Like two swimmers who love the water, their souls knit together without being sewn, no seam. The king said, you 
for my beloved, not the girl. But actions spring from actions in this reality. What should I do? We should always ask for discipline. One who has no self-control cannot receive grace. And it's not just himself he hurts. Undisciplined people set fire to the landscape. A table of food was once coming down from the sky to feed Moses and his people, when suddenly voices from the crowd called out, Where's the garlic? 227. And, we want lentils. At once the bread and the dishes of grace food disappeared. Everyone had to keep digging with mattocks and cutting with long sides. Then Jesus interceded and sent more trays of food. But again some insolent people showed no respect. They grabbed like it wouldn't be enough, even though Jesus kept telling them, this food will last. It will always be here. To be suspicious and greedy when majesty arrives is the worst arrogance. The gates close, withhold your giving, and no rain clouds will form. When sex goes on between everybody all the time, epidemics spread in every direction. When you feel wound over, it's your failure to praise. Irreverence and no discipline rob your soul of life. The king opened his arms and held the saintly doctor to him. He kissed his hand and his forehead and asked how his journey had been. Many dear concerns for this one who had been announced in his dream. He led him to the head table. At last, I have found what patience can bring. This one whose face answers any question, who simply by looking can loosen the knot of intellectual discussion. You translate what is inside us. If you were to vanish, this vast meaning room would shrink to a closet. Protect us. They talked and ate a spirit meal. Then the king took the doctor's hand and led him to where the girl lay, telling him the story of her illness. The doctor felt her pulse. 228. And observed her coloring in her urine. Your healers have not helped. They've made her worse. They don't know the inner states. The secret of her pain opened to him, but he didn't tell the king what it was. It was love, of course. The ailments of love are different from any other. Love is the astrolabe that sights into the mysteries of God. Earth love, spirit love, any love looks into that yonder, and whatever I try to say explaining love is embarrassing. Some commentary clarifies, but with love silence is clearer. A pen went scribbling along, but when it tried to write love, it broke. If you want to expound on love, take your intellect out and let it lie down in the mud. It's no help. You want proof that the sun exists, so you stay up all night talking about it. Finally you sleep as the sun comes up. Look at it. Nothing is so strange in this entire world as the sun. The sun of the soul is even more so. It has no yesterday. The physical sun is unique, but it's possible to imagine something like it. The spiritual sun has nothing comparable, inner or outer. Imagination cannot contain it. Word of that. Sun, shams, came and everything his. Now Lucen touches my arm. He wants me to say more about Sham. Not now, Lucen. I don't know how to make words make sense, or phrase. In the friend place nothing true can be said. Let me just be here. But Lucen begs, feed me. Hurry. Time is a sharp downstroke. A Sufi. 229. Is supposed to be a child of the moment. Aren't you a Sufi? Don't say tomorrow or later. 
And I reply, it's better that the way of the friend be concealed in a story. Let the mystery come through what people say around the lovers, not from what lovers say to each other. No, I want this. As naked and true as it can be. I don't wear a shirt when I lie down with my beloved. Zero Usum, it's a friend. Came to you completely naked, your chest could not stand it. You wouldn't be here in your body any longer. Ask for what you want, but within some limits. A little stick can't hold up a mountain. If that inner sun by which existence exists came even a little closer, everything would be scorched. Don't ask for that. Say no more for now about Shamsi Tabriz. Go back to the beginning. This has no end. The end of the story of the king and the lovesick maiden and the holy doctor, who said, leave me alone with the girl. It was done, and quietly he began. Where are you from? Who are your relatives there? Who else are you close to in that region? On and on he gently asked about her life. When someone steps barefooted on a thorn, he immediately puts his foot on his knee and searches with a needle, and when he can't locate the tip, he moistens around the place with moisture from his lips. A splinter is often difficult to get out. How much more difficult a thorn in the heart? If everyone could find the thorn in themselves, things would be 230. Much more peaceful here. Someone puts a clump of burrs under a donkey tail. The donkey doesn't know what's wrong. He just starts jumping and bucking around. An intelligent, thorn-removing doctor must come and investigate. So the divine physician asked about her friends and held her hand to feel the pulse. She told many stories of her home, mentioning many names, and he would say the names again after her to test the pulse reaction. Finally he asked, when you visit other towns, where are you most likely to go? She said one town, then another, where she bought bread and where salt, describing the houses, until he happened to say the word Samarkand. The dear city sweet as candy. She blushed, her breath caught. Zero she loves a goldsmith in Samarkand. She misses him so. Where exactly does he live? At the head of the bridge on Gadafar Street. Now I can heal you. Don't be afraid. I will do to you what rain is to a meadow. But don't tell this to anyone, certainly not the king. When the love center in your chest becomes the grave for such a secret, then what you want will be quickly yours. Seeds must hide in the ground to become whatever is in them. The girl felt better. She trusted him. The doctor went to the king and told him part of the story. On some pretext, we must bring here from Samarkand a certain goldsmith. Lure him with the prospect of wealth and honors. 231. The king's messengers went with robes and coins and easily persuaded the man to leave his family and his town. He rode an Arabian horse into the presence of the king and the doctor, who said, Marry the girl to Ree's man, and she will be completely cured. It was done, and for six months those two loved and made love and totally satisfied themselves with each other. The girl was restored to perfect health. Then the physician gave the goldsmith a potion, so that he began to sicken. His handsomeness faded, and his strength dwindled. Little by little he became sunken cheeked and jaundiced and ugly, and the girl stopped loving him. Any love based on physical beauty is not love. This world is a mountain. What we do is a shout. 
The echo comes back to us. The goldsmith said that in died. Choose to love the one who does not die. Don't say, but how can we do that? The generous one is not hard to find. But what about the doctor?